Ah, done with the animation. Whew. I'm gonna take a break for this week. Hopefully not a lot will happen. Guess not! Master Duel has hit 50 million downloads and Konami is celebrating. Konami is giving away a thousand gems and a limited time offer on 2,000 gems for 20 bucks, which is half the price of how much 2,000 gems normally is, so grab it while you can. Also, they're giving out a free card sleeve based around Five Headed Dragon along with it, so all in all, pretty cool. And doing especially well for a game that clickbaity YouTubers and 4chan threads claim is dying. You know, a game that on average gets between 16 to 30,000 players daily, putting it in the top percentage of played Steam games, not even including mobile or console players. I just want to remind you guys, this is what a dead game looks like. Some guards have been naughty little kittens and deserve a spanking. Or at least should be put on a ban list. This ban list update is mostly small stuff with Magical Meltdown being unlimited, Gen X Alley Birdman and Galatea being set to two, and with Harp Horror going to two, must feel really nice to be an Orcus player right now. An anti-spell fragrance is going to two, continuing the trend of floodgates being semi-limited, which I prefer rather than flat bands. But something that absolutely deserved getting banned is Barrier Statue of the Stormwinds, which has finally been hit with the ban hammer. Why this specific statue and not any of the other barrier statues? Well, for one, Stormwinds was searchable in the already powerful tri and Flu Under Reese decks, and Flu especially is pretty powerful at locking you down as is. On top of that, wind decks in comparison to other attributes are less common with the current meta right now which favors dark monsters at this moment. Now that being said, this doesn't kill Flu, as there's still plenty to deal with with that deck. And people are replacing it right now with DD Crow, a pretty decent hand trap, especially against decks like Despia. A new secret pack is here. About time. The new pack is Alba Abyss, and it's based around Branded and Albas cards, which makes a lot of sense as there are a lot of Branded cards that are no longer as easily obtainable due to the selection pack for Albas no longer being around. And with the Duelist Cup coming up, I think it's actually pretty cool to give a lot of players easier access to one of the best decks in the game right now. There are also some new cards included like Albas, the Ashens, and such, but the most shocking inclusion is Branded Expulsion, which is only a normal. And, uh... If you know about Edo the Supreme Magical Being, and you know how you can use it with Branded Expulsion, you're probably freaking out right now. And for those who don't know about Edo Lock, imagine Artifact Scythe, but it prevents all summoning, is far easier to do, and is continuous. Slip well! Giving a quick addendum, Edo is bugged right now in that it prevents even setting monsters which is not how this card is supposed to work. So I'd advise against using Edo for now until it's patched, and please report people exploiting this bug. Thank you. Also, a new selection pack is on its way. Mysterious Labyrinth. Included in this pack are the long-awaited new support for the Weather Fairies and the Predaplant archetypes, as well as the introduction of two new archetypes, Labyrinth and Runix. Runix being an archetype themed around quick play spells that if the circumstances are right, can be activated from your hand on your opponent's turn and are geared more towards decking out your opponent rather than damage. While Labyrinth is themed around normal trap cards chaining a bunch of effects and just all around giving your opponent a bad time. I haven't had the most experience with these decks yet, but from what I've heard, these two are very powerful archetypes that should lead to some interesting shenanigans, and hopefully Konami won't go gung-ho with the URs like with Scareclaw. I'm probably going to lean towards Labyrinth just because I typically like trap-focused decks to begin with. Also, I want mommy, I want milk, I want to be held. A new structure deck is on the way with Immortal Glory. A structure deck themed around zombies and synchro summoning. This is a bit of an interesting choice as it's not tied to a specific archetype like the other structure decks, and is geared more towards a general theme. Some inclusions are Red Eye Zombie Dragon Lord and Skeletal Dragon Felgrim, and probably most importantly, at least for the cards revealed, Unizombie. The Unizombie can discard a card from your hand as well as a zombie card from your deck to increase the level of monsters on the field. Just an all around crazy card and a must have if you're running zombies considering the endless amount of possible combinations you can use with it. Now the two other big URs that hopefully will be included are Zombie World and Doom King Baladrog. Two cards that turn any zombie deck into something brutal. Dreams came true with Sonnet Mining being included in the last deck. Let's hope magic happens again. And finally, now it's time to talk about leaks. As always, do remember this is content from data mining and may not be included in the game right away, or will be included at all, so keep that in mind. According to Master Duel Meta, a new solo mode based around the Starry Night archetype is coming. And that's all I have to say about that. I really don't know a lot about them. 
I mostly used their secret pack for Dragon Mate cards. So, solo mode gates are always a bit of fun. There were also some assets for the five-headed dragon sleeve shown before, Starry Knight sleeves, and Tri Brigade, as well as an icon for Starry Knight. And finally, there's a lot of assets for the Duelist Cup, including icons, sleeves, and a profile frame that's most likely for the upcoming Duelist Cup. Something far more interesting to me, however, is that there is some code that designates that if you have cross-platform play turned off, you won't be able to take part in the second stage of the Duelist Cup. This is fascinating to me, given the controversy that happened in the previous cup, which... You know what, yeah, I'm going to explain it. It's been months. The winner of the previous Duelist Cup, whose name I won't give out for the sake of privacy, dueled with crossplay turned off during the second half. This was super controversial due to the fact that they were playing on Xbox, which has a much smaller and reportedly weaker player pool. And he already apparently had a reputation of exploiting this fact to farm for gems and rank in previous events by essentially playing against himself with a different Xbox. With all of this, it's not hard to see why people have been accusing them of cheating the event to get to a higher place. That being said, there's nothing confirmed, and I'm not saying whether he's guilty of cheating or just exploiting a flaw in the system. But regardless, I think Konami making crossplay mandatory is probably the right move. So along with this, as well as what's honestly a better meta than the previous Duelist Cup, at least in my opinion, this should make for a better event. But what about you? What was the biggest piece of news to you? What deck are you using in the Duelist Cup? Let me know in the comments, please subscribe. And there's no Duelist Cup theme song, so I'ma borrow this from the World Cup. My dad's been watching the World Cup, so I've had to hear this song constantly, and now you have to suffer too.